Hey, everybody. Welcome into Tuned Into NOCO. Today, I have two great individuals on our show. We have the Homeward Alliance Marketing and Communications Coordinator, Jake Greco. And we also have the Homeward Alliance Development Director, Pam Brewer. So first off, you two, thanks for joining me today. Can one or both of you explain to our listeners what Homeward Alliance is all about? Homeward Alliance is a Larimer County-based not-for-profit, and our mission is to help people families and individuals who are facing homelessness to survive, move forward, and thrive. Now, you guys have a Mission to Hope Walk happening Saturday, October 8th at 10 a.m. What should people know about this event? Yeah, so um, it's going to be starting at 10 a.m., and we're going to start at uh, Catholic Charity Samaritan House and walk to the Murphy Center for Hope. And it's it's to show support for you know our neighbors in our community and kind of get a sense of a walk that they have to do almost every day. So it's just to, to try to bring the community together and maybe raise a little bit of funds to help those people out. Now, where can people get tickets or register? How does that work? Uh, you can register on our website. Um, if you go right to our homepage at homewardalliance.org, there's a little banner there you can click, and it will bring you to our Mission to Hope Walk page. Um, you can go to homewardalliance.org slash uh, HWA slash Mission to Hope Walk. You can just search it in Google, Mission to Hope Walk, and you should be able to find our page there. And... Um, It'll bring you to uh, another page on QGive.com where you can register. So this is a family and dog friendly event and there is going to be tours, refreshments, and you guys have a mugshot showcase. What is that? Uh, one of the events we're featuring at our open house is called More, More, More Than a Mugshot. Um, and it's a photo essay project that one of our uh, previous employees created uh, she's now an MSW at Summit Stone Health Partners, uh, but she used to work for our reentry program. Uh, her name is Bree Jones, and what she did uh, during her time at Homeward Alliance is she chronicled the experience of people who were coming out of prison, who were facing homelessness, and wanted to rebuild their lives, to get jobs, to find housing, to reconnect with their loved ones, and so she took some photos of the folks. Um, and chronicled their stories, and we're going to have that um, displayed at the walk for people to to basically learn more about that project. That's so neat. This is also benefiting, you, like you said, the Murphy Center for Hope. For our listeners who don't know, can you explain what the center is? Sure. So the Murphy Center um, has been um, a one-stop resource center for Larimer County for about 12 to 14 years now. Um, it's named after Sister Mary Alice Murphy, that some people in the community certainly know she um, is a local advocate for uh, families and adults who face homelessness and housing insecurity. She helped start the food bank for Larimer County, uh, care housing. Uh, she was very instrumental in Catholic charities. Um, and so the Murphy Center is a container of about 20 different nonprofits who commit to collaborating together and providing like a one-stop shop for people who are homeless. Mm -hmm. So because people who are homeless um, are not a monolithic group, they have different needs. Um, some folks are young, some are senior citizens, others are facing mental health issues or substance use issues, some are families. Um, there's not one way to serve that group. Yeah. And so people can come to the Murphy Center and sort of get triaged and referred on site to the to the organizations that can best serve them. Wow, I didn't know that they had like a wide variety of services. Yeah. That's we have really uh, veteran services, family services. We have a, a great program called the Street Dog Coalition. They come in once a, a week and provide care to um, people who have pets. We have a bike repair program oh, cool. that goes out into the community and fixes bikes. We also have a mobile laundry truck. Who, who visit locations in Loveland and Fort Collins. No way. Wash laundry for families and adults. Wow, that's incredible. Now, like you said, you're fundraising for the Murphy Center, and they have a wide variety of services for all these nonprofits. Is there a certain number that you're hoping to fundraise for this year? Our goal for the Mission to Hope Walk is $30,000. And as of right now, we're about half of the way there. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's great. You guys heard that. Help them fundraise $30,000. You guys are at about $15,000 right now. That's already quite a bit. That's awesome. So head to homewardalliance.org and register for the Mission to Hope Walk. It's happening October 8th. 
sure to be a great time and it is for a great cause. Moving forward, is there any other events or things that you guys have coming up that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, we actually have quite a few things coming up. Um, This Thursday, we're having a question and answer session on Zoom with our executive uh, director, David Root. If people are interested in participating in that, that's Thursday um, at noon. They can get a link um, to that through our Facebook site, or they can just email email info at homewardalliance.org. And it's really an opportunity to ask any question you might have. So common questions for us are, if you see someone panhandling, should you give them a dollar? Um, why do people become homeless? Um, what's the best way to help? And so we like to just provide um, an opportunity for guests to ask our executive director, our, our, our community, and just ask you know, anything they might have on their mind. Speaking of, what is the answer to that? I know I have some friends who will keep bottles of water in their car, granola bars, stuff like that. But what helps their needs more? Do you give them money or do you give them food? What have you guys found? Our organization takes um, a hands-off approach to that. Yeah, we, we really think that that's a decision that every person needs to make for themselves. Some people have religious or ethical reasons for wanting to give or, or not. Um, what we hear a lot from the people, though, who have escaped homelessness is some of the kindest actions that they received while panhandling was to simply be acknowledged as a human being. So look at someone in the eyes, say good morning, sort of treat them like anyone else. Because um, I'll never forget this one person we served who's now housed and has a family, he's been successfully housed for several several years now. He said he started, um, after a few months of being homeless, he became very sleep deprived and started to feel very invisible. Yeah. And the longer that went on, the harder it felt that he, he, he wasn't sure he was ever going to be able to escape that. Yeah. But the people who acknowledged him and just said hello to him, like really were an anchor to him of just kind of like his own humanity. And, and he eventually was able to get, get help and get out. For sure. Um, so even if you don't want to give a dollar or, or, or a blessing bag or anything like that, I think just treating people with kindness goes a long way. Absolutely. Shooting them some smiles. Yeah. And just to go off of that, um, I was actually talking to one of our guests at uh, our Project Homeless Connect event that we had earlier in the year. And um he just recently beca- er, started experiencing homelessness, and he was a, a security guard for Tech Nine through all of his events, and he loved it. Um, but you know, with the pandemic, a lot of concerts, uh, you know, stopped. They stopped being able to perform, so he uh, that that took away his source of income. And he said the hardest part for him wasn't that he couldn't find food or that he wasn't sure where he would sleep. It was being ignored by. Um, you know, people in the community and just being being treated a certain way just because of the way he looked or or um, his living situation. So, you know, that's right. w- another big part of why we're so, um, you know, passionate about the Mission to Hope Walk, for example, coming up is we want to show them that we are still here and we do support them. And, you know, we want to help them any way we can and just sh- show that solidarity in our community. Absolutely. Now, if somebody can't make this walk, are there other ways they can donate? Do they go to their website? What's the deal on that? Yeah, so you can donate on our website. There's a little donate button on every page at the top left. Um, You can even donate for the event. Uh, If you go to the event page, you can donate right on there. So rather than registering, you can donate and just get funds for the event. Um, If you still want to be involved, but, you know, Saturday might not work. We have a couple other events on that weekend. I believe it's at the Bread Chic. We're at the Art Walk um, on October 7th. We're having the More Than a Mug Shot displayed there. So you can see that there if you're not able to make it to Mission to Hope Walk. Um, also on Sunday, we're doing a Stuff the Truck event where if you have uh, donations that you would like to, you know, uh, bring out, we're accepting that there. We have live music. It is on... October 9th, that's 2.30 to 6.30. Uh, the music will be provided by Devin Ray Music, Rob Solo, Heart Medicine, and The Kitty Project. So, you know, that'll be a lot of fun, and, and we're always looking for some winner uh, donations there as well. Definitely. And that's going to be at Max Line Brewery. 
Okay, great. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Don't show up at the Murphy Center for that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, (laughs) for sure. Now, let's pivot here for a couple of minutes. Let's talk about both of you. How did you guys get involved with Homeward Alliance? Jake or Pam, I don't know who'd like to answer that first. I can go first, and then you can finish off. Yeah, so I worked at a, a marketing company out of college, and, you know, I was there for a few years, and I wanted to help small businesses kind of grow and, you know, provide their marketing services for them because a lot of it can be a little, you know, overwhelming whenever you try to get into that digital space. So I did that for a while, but I wasn't feeling as, you know, fulfilled in my work. I wanted to feel like I was making a difference in a positive way, not just making money for a company. So that kind of led me to look for some other jobs. And it just happened that, you know, they started to create a new position for the marketing communications coordinator at Homeward Alliance at the same time. And, you know, I applied and things just went from there. That's awesome. Great. Pam, same thing. How did you get involved? I started out as a volunteer about um, eight years ago. Um, I saw an ad in the Coloradoan asking for volunteers to help support um, families who were experiencing homelessness. And, you know, a couple years went by and I got to know the staff at Homeward Alliance. It was then called Homeless Gear. Um, I started volunteering at the Murphy Center I met the volunteers, and I just was so impressed. I was like, these are my people. There was so much passion um, and, you know, really um, sort of an entrepreneurial roll up your your shirt sleeves and work. Right. But also a focus on best practices. So not so much about what can we do from a charity mindset, but more how can we work smart? How can we collaborate? How can we really ultimately move the needle? on homelessness. And that just really resonated with me. Yeah. Because I've been involved in lots of things that felt good. And and I'm not knocking that. But I've walked away from some volunteer opportunities feeling like, I don't know if we really even made a difference (laughs) long term. Yeah, right. And at at Homeward Alliance, I was like, this, this is changing things. And I just when they had an opportunity, I just jumped on it. Seriously, I've been employed about six years now. And speaking of volunteering, how do people volunteer for Homeward Alliance? Yeah, so you can go on our webpage. Uh, There's a a volunteer section in our website, and it'll list all of our volunteer opportunities. Yeah, you can go to volunteer at homewardalliance.org and send an email that way, too, if you'd like. Great. Yeah, and we have, with all of our different programs, there's a lot of different opportunities. So if you want to be more maybe, um, you know, client-facing and you want to help out on, like, boots-on-the-ground type of thing and talk to people and interact, there's opportunities like that. And then there's all other op- also other opportunities where, you know, you don't have to like, interact with as many people, but we can still use your help. You know, we For had sure. a, um, we needed a room painted a few months back, and I believe a local, um, was it a baseball team? A local baseball team came in and helped paint really? that room. Yeah, just some, so some cool. kids and a, a couple adults there. And um, yeah, it was great. That's awesome. So I don't know if you have the statistics on this or not, but how many homeless people do you guys work with weekly or monthly? Um, I can give that that to you annually. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> yeah, we serve about five thousand people a year wow. from Larimer County um, annually. Um, about <clears throat> three thousand um, single individuals and about two thousand family members. Okay, incredible. Well, it's really amazing what you guys do. Again, for our listeners, register now for the Mission to Hope Walk. It's happening October eighth. For more info or how to register, you can head to homewardalliance.org. You can also get more information on how to volunteer or donate at that site as well. Well, Pam, Jake, is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know? Uh, just that we're very thankful to be invited, and um, we we hope people will join us on Thursday to talk to our executive director. If you if this interview or um, has spurred some questions you'd like to ask yourself, we'd love to answer them for you. Pam, Jake, thank you. Thank you.